Today we're gonna learn how to use Firestore from Firebase in React with this school directory app. I recently upgraded this Firebase tutorial repo with the new version of Firestore, the version 9. This one has been version 7 for quite a while. You can find version 7 still here in this branch. But today we're gonna look at how to actually connect the version 9 with React uh, in a CRUD app, which is this school directory application where you can add uh, different schools with a score also register log in and log out your user and if you're logged in and add a school the email of the person that has added the school will appear here if there is nothing or if there is nobody logged in it says unknown so let's register quickly a new user register and we can see we are logged in here again. And if we add another school, we can submit that. And we can see we have added it. So to start, we need to set up Firebase. You can go here to add a new project, give it a name. Enable or disable Google Analytics. For this, we disable it. Then we have to wait a minute. Now the project is ready. And we can already go here to build Firestore database. And we can see there is, uh, we, we can create a database here. We can create in production or test mode about the security rules. There is a video linked in the description down below where, ex uh, where I explain exactly how to use the security rules from Firestore. So we can click next here. We choose a server. now our database is set up. One thing we cannot forget is go again to project overview and get started by adding your Firebase uh, to your app is if we work in the web, we wanna click here to web and then we wanna register an app. So school directory 22 can be any name actually. And then here we get our credentials with the API keys then we can continue back to our console. So that's all it takes to set up a Firebase or a Firestore project. So let's go into the code. So before we go into the code, I just quickly wanna mention that I offer a personal consultation. If you want support for your application in any kinds of questions, Next.js, React.js, Material UI, something like that, I would be really happy to help out. The link to that is in the description down below. But now let's jump into the code. So here we have a basic create react app. Here we have Firebase where the credentials we just seen uh, should be put in here. Also, we need to install Firebase um, as an NPM or a yarn package. If you wanna see what's all installed, you can go here to the package.json and make sure to import um, the different things from Firebase as you see here to reduce the bundle size if you just uh, import stuff from here, the whole bundle of Firebase will be included. But then at the end of the day, you can copy paste that, the link to the repo is in the description down below. So now this will initialize Firebase and auth, like the authentication from Firebase. So Firebase does not only provide the database, but also the authentication methods. Then let's check out our app here. It's a pretty basic application. We have the provider, welcome login, and then the snapshot Firebase advanced uh, component, which is just the listing you see below. We will only uh, look at the snapshot Firebase advanced component as auth is not in this tutorial. I will link at the, a video about the, the authentication methods of Firebase in the description down below. So here to give you a quick overview, we have the snapshot Firebase uh, component. We have here a one-time get function, which is commented out. I will get to it why in a minute. Then here we have the real-time get function. So this is where you get the schools. This is the add function where we will add it, the delete and the edit. So pretty much a basic CRUD application. And then down here is the UI, which we won't go into detail. 
Again, the repo is in the description down below. You can check it out there. So the biggest difference of using Firestore in comparison to something like a REST endpoint is that Firestore does not really prefer the one-time get function. So usually if you have a database, you use a REST get request to get data. And if you then edit some data, you get a response back and you put that in your state, um, in your React app. In Firebase, it works a little bit different. In Firebase, we have real-time uh, updates on our data. So what we do is we initialize a connection with our database and then we just listen to changes. And if that changes appear, we will update our state. That works very seamlessly, especially in React. And it's almost the same like working with web sockets. It's just sometimes hard for us developers wrapping our head around that as we used to having this usual get post uh, and patch functions. But as I said, in Firebase, that works a little bit differently. If you still prefer this one time get, here is uh, a use effects function where we have this one time get. The, uh, the key here is to use the get docs uh, function, which comes from uh, Firestore itself instead of the on snapshot function from uh, which also is imported by Firestore. But in this tutorial, we will only really get into the real uh, get function or real time uh, updating get function as this is way easier to handle and it plays a little bit better with Firestore. Then let's focus on this real time get function. Let's minify that for a bit. Uh, this is the query. We will check that out in at the end of the video. But here we have this on snapshot function with this collection ref. The collection ref is actually the reference to the collection. So this needs to be the same name as the collection we want to target. So if you go to our database, we have a collection here, schools. So this needs to be the same name here. And that's the database, which comes from Firebase, which is the, the Firebase um, app or the Firestore uh, database that we initialized in the Firebase uh, file here. So with this collection ref, we now have the reference to which collection we want to target. And then we can use this on snapshot method from Firestore uh, inside of our use effect hook. And then in this on snapshot, we get a query snapshot object back or a, an array back where we can loop uh, with for each. Then here we have a document. The document uh, has the method data and we just uh, loop over it and push this document data into the items. And that's how we get all of the schools or all of these elements at the end of the day. And then once uh, that's done, we push these uh, items or the schools in set school, which is uh, the setter uh, of our use state hook. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Also, don't forget to return this function uh, to unsubscribe when the component unmounts. Then the add function is al almost as, uh, as easy. So we have some uh, business logic up here, the new school object. One important thing is the UUID we add here. We do this with the package UUID and then this server timestamp. Keep in mind to not add new date or something like that as this can't be trusted because new date, so this one here, takes the date of the browser, but with this server timestamp, we can be sure that it's correct because this also comes from Firebase Firestore. So this method here, um, so that's the recommended way how to use a uh, timestamp. And then this new school object goes in here to set doc, which is a method again coming from Firestore itself. So up here. And here we have one different element. We have the school ref where we need the collection ref. So this is our database and the name of our collection, which in this case is school. So again, uh, this reference up here. And then if you go back down, we have this collection ref and then we need to put in the ID. So the new school ID. That's at the end of the day, what we'll show in our database here. So this will register that uh, URL. So if I would add a new school ID as a string here and add a new school, this wouldn't be a UID, this would be a school.id or new school.id. 
And then we can just use this school ref and the new school object and that's already it. So very, very easy. And then very easy as well is to delete a school. So here we have the school ref again. This is a document method from Firestore. We again have our collection ref. And then what we just need is our school ID we want to delete. And then we just uh, use this delete doc method from Firestore again um, and put in here our school ref and that's it. That's the only thing we need to be able to delete a school. And then edit school, it's almost the same as delete. Again, we have our school ref here. Um, and then we put in here our updated school object here into our update doc method from Firestore. Firestore will then automatically compare the changes that we have here and only add the changes um, that we wanted here in our updated school object. That's one of the beautiful thing about Firestore. It does that all uh, automatically without us having to uh, care about performance issues when we do updates uh, in our database. And that's pretty much it what we have to know about a CRUD app with Firestore. So we had edit, delete, add. And now we go back to different queries. So what we can do with Firestore, of course, as with any database, we can query our data. So that means instead of putting or passing our collection ref here as the first uh, argument, we use this Q object, which itself has the collection ref here, but then we can add different uh, methods to it, like this where. This where also is a method from Firestore itself. And then we can all filter, for example, only the schools that have a title of school one. So I didn't save yet. So that's why we see different schools. So if we have that, I don't think we have a school one. So let's use school 13. Now we save that. And now we can see we only get the school 13 back. One important thing to know though is if you want to chain where's together, we can use that with this. Um, if we have a different where here and we want to score only that it's equal or bigger than uh, 100, which should be the case here because the, the score here is 10. So that works, but that only works if I've, because I've already prepared something here in the indexes. So if you have combination queries, you need to add an index here. If we delete, for example, this index and try this again, so let's reload the app. We can see we get this error here and we don't get any data back. And the error says Firestore uncocked error in the snapshot listener called failed precondition name Firebase error. Of course, this is a very bad error. In the past, they had a link where they actually uh, directed you to build the index uh, directly. It's not the case anymore. I don't exactly know why. Maybe they fixed that in uh, future versions of the version 9. So how you would again add this index is if you come here, composite, create index, and then field path that would need to be title and score. And this doesn't matter if you don't need uh, this uh, composite index as an order by index. So here we need to add our collection ID. And then here it's for a collection, not a collection group. And then we hit, have to create the index. And this usually takes a couple of minutes. So I don't want to go further into detail. Here are the links to the documentation. You can read it up yourself. So this is a real downside and it may be easier to just use a easy query, so a non-composite query, and then filter whatever you need to filter on the client. So that's pretty much all you need to know to start your Firestore app with React. I have way more videos about backups and the security rules that, to make your app secure. So uh, make sure to check them out. The links are in the description down below or as, uh, better set the playlist. I uh, hope this video helped. If it did, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.